I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sharon Noble, Director of the BC Coalition to Stop Smart Meters. Welcome back to the show, Sharon. Thank you very much, Jim. You say you've received a disturbing note from the BC Utilities Commission. Well, it's not really a note. I received what is their final response. To my complaint that I made in July of 2015, um, charging that they are not doing their job under the Utilities Commission Act, their prime function is to ensure the safety of the BC public as far as utilities are concerned. And smart meters cause fires, and for two years the BC Utilities Commission kept telling me that they could not investigate my charges because they'd been told by the government to stay out of anything related to smart meters. And I kept charging them, saying, no, that's, you know, the Clean Energy Act cannot be superseded, or cannot supersede the Utilities Commission Act. The Utilities Commission Act is very important, it's vital. And finally, they, they agreed to look at my complaint. I sent them evidence of about, um, eight fires and meter failures. I have many more I could have sent but I chose at random so that I wouldn't swamp them. I waited until September for the meet to even respond. They said that I would have the staff report by the end of the year. I didn't. The end of February, I got a copy of their draft report, and they sent it to me, to Fortis and to Hydro, and asked if we would like to make comments. Fortis and Hydro really didn't make any comments. I made quite a few pages of comments in response to some of their really outlandish admissions, and I provided them more information to substantiate my assertions that no one was tracking, no one was monitoring, and no one was accepting responsibility to ensure that these meters are safe. Finally, they sent a response to me about two weeks ago, and the covering letter begins with, a statement that is one of the most confusing that I've ever read in my whole life. And basically it says that um, the evidence does not demonstrate an increased fire safety risk. But it says that the, uh, they've determined that there are, that the reporting through uh, BC Hydro and Fortis is incomplete, leaving major gaps about fire incidents and high temperature incidents. Now, what does this mean? You know, I told them that no one was tracking, that no one was monitoring, and now they're saying, well, yes, that's true. And among some of the information that they've acknowledged is that the BC Hydro admits that they do not track any, quote, post-installation events. So if your meter was installed badly, and things were damaged, for instance, by Corex, the the people who were not trained very well and were not really qualified to do the job, your meter might not have exploded or caught fire immediately. Experts, electricians, engineers have said it can sometimes take weeks or even months for the arcing to occur as a result of this damage. So if the meter caught fire a week or two weeks after the installation, Hydro's not monitoring it. They're not reporting it. And I have from Hydro a statement saying that they don't inspect the meter after it's failed or burned. They remove it from the scene of the fire and send it straight back to ITRON for replacement. So no one knows why it's burning. BC Hydro also admitted that BC Hydro is not supposed to be removing any meters from the scene of a fire. It is against the law. But I provided them with 
several instances, in fact 15, that had been reported to me by BC Safety Authority, by the fire commissioner, etc., saying that the meter had been removed from the scene of the fire before the meter could be inspected. And yet BC UC is saying nothing about this. They're not instructing BC Hydro to stop breaking the rules. They're not, they aren't um, enforcing any of the regulations. What they are admitting is that there are major problems here. And their, um, result, the result of their, quote, review is that they don't have enough evidence to, deti to determine that the smart meters are dangerous. And they are putting it back on me. They say that the onus is on me to provide evidence that these are not safe. I disagree with that entirely. I believe the evidence is upon them, on BC Hydro, to prove that they are safe. BC Hydro has been exempted from having to have these things certified under the, the uh, regulations. They are given exemptions. Any equipment that is owned by BC Hydro does not have to be certified safe by the Canadian safety standards. If we buy a lamp, a toaster, anything, they have to be certified safe. But these things that are being put on our homes don't have to be because they're owned by the utility company. Now, this is an outrageous statement. And given the fact that we know that they're causing da damage, that they have failed, I've got reports that they're burning, there is no reason why BC Utilities Commission should not instruct BC Hydro to have these friggin' things certified to be safe, to be inspected by a res respectable, by a reputable independent uh, standards association, the Canadian Standards Association. And they're saying, no, they don't have to be. This is... I, the report is just as damning as could be. Uh, the final report takes out a lot of the initial admissions that they made in the draft, and they include virtually none of the evidence that I provided them. They have basically ignored it. Um, I had uh, evidence that was provided by three electrical engineers who refused to provide their names because they were fearful of ramifications. They're working. And Hydro has come after people who have spoken out, and they were fearful they could lose their jobs. But they identified multiple design flaws, and they presented them to the BC Utilities Commission. And the Utilities Commission said that they are ignoring them because the engineers would not sign their names. So, you know, there's a lot of really, there are a lot of things that are happening here that people should be very, very concerned about. And even though BC Utilities Commission has said they consider the file closed, I don't. And I'm in the process right now of preparing a response. Why do you think they're ignoring the law? Are they under orders from the government? Probably. They're government appointees. Sure, they're probably being told. You know, they're trying to, they're trying to cover themselves by saying they reviewed this. And they're not saying that there aren't problems. They're saying that there are problems in tracking and reporting. But what they're saying is now that they're going to, they're instructing that BC Hydro and Fortis have to keep track of incidents. Well, what if they don't? Who's going to enforce it? How will they know that BC Hydro is properly tracking these things? I don't frankly believe it for a minute. They haven't done, they haven't been following the rules in the past. Why should we believe that they will follow these instructions? I don't see, and they say that there's there's nothing here about meters that have melted and failed. There's nothing here that I think addresses the major issue. They're allowing the fox to take charge of the hen house. Hydro has not proven itself to be trustworthy, and I don't believe that this is the way it should be addressed. I think there needs to be an independent agency that is overviewing overviewing this. For instance. One of the laws, another law that's being broken in addition to the meters being removed from the fires, is that in any time the fire department believes that there is a fire that has been caused by some sort of an electrical malfunction, they're supposed to ask the BC Safety Authority to come and review the evidence. 
This isn't happening. No one is calling the BC Safety Authority on a consistent basis. It's a hydro uh, and not the fire commissioners, not the fire department. I would say probably 50% of the time when in reports that I have found where there's something electrical that has um, been blamed, they aren't calling in any expert to inspect it. And if the experts aren't coming, many times the resultant information is called undetermined. It's electrical in nature. It's an electrical malfunction, undetermined cause. That tells us absolutely nothing. And further, BC Utilities Commission had decided to believe Len Garris, even though they admit the evidence that Len Garris's report, you remember Len Garris. He is the former uh, head of the Fire Chiefs Association. He was paid by BC Hydro to write a report to see if the smart meters had caused fires. He looked at the fire commissioner's annual reports, which merely count fires. They don't do anything else. They count the number of fires that have been reported in various categories. Smart meters belong in the category of electrical fires. There is no classification for smart meters. Also, they do not count undetermined fires. And many of the, quote, smart meter fires or electrical malfunction fires are said to be undetermined because the smart meter's either been burned up or it's been removed. So Van Garris has not told in his report that he is using incomplete or inaccurate or false data. What he says is because there are fewer electrical fires reported after the smart meters started to be installed than there were before, this means that the smart meters are safe. NBC Utilities Commission is saying, despite all these gaps in data, despite, despite all of the um, misinformation and lacking information, they believe Len Garris' report because he's an academic. He's an academic. He's an adjunct professor. An adjunct professor is, some, is someone who occasionally goes in and talks to some students. He's not an academic. My husband's an academic. My husband has a PhD. He taught university. Len Garris is not an academic. And just because he's been paid to write a report, that doesn't mean his report is worth anything. I think if a true academic reviewed his report, reviewed the data upon which his de uh, report was based, they would laugh at it. They would say, this is not a report that an academic would write. Jim, I'm not an academic. I don't have a PhD. I don't teach university. But I could write a better report than Len Garris did. And I could base it on more accurate information than Len Garris did. It is shameful. It's outright shameful. This reminds me so much of the missing women when Picton was busy killing them one a month. When the Vancouver police would say to me, when I said, what are you going to do about this serial killer on the downtown east side of Vancouver? And they would say to me, no body, no crime. Of course, they never looked for bodies, and they never investigated missing person reports. So if you don't investigate, of course, you'll never find a body. If you don't look, you won't find. And as I've put, I, I wrote at the bottom of, I was reading through this r report that uh, I got, and trying to, you know, I was making notes on it. And when I finished it, the only thing I could come up with, garbage garbage in, roses out. That's exactly what BC Utilities Commission is. They're gathering garbage, and they're making it into roses. We'll have more with Sharon Noble right after the break. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa. Located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange. Symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sharon Noble. Sharon, do you consider this issue to be dead and done like the BC Utilities Commission? Not by a long shot, Jim. 
you and the BC Utilities Commission should know me better than that. They haven't done their job in investigating the reports that I've given them. And I'm if they want more information, they threw it back at me. They said the onus is on me to show that these meters are not safe. Okay. I'll pick up their challenge. They want to see the pages and pages and pages of reports that I have. They'll see them. But I'll, I will tell you what will happen. They will ignore those too. I think the only thing that's going to get any attention is a lawsuit. And I've got many people in the coalition right now who are considering lawsuits of one sort or another, whether it's against BC Hydro for allowing something dangerous to be put on their homes, for um, being made sick by the radiation, or the BC Utilities Commission. You know, these panel members, these commission members, are individuals who are given a fiduciary responsibility to protect the British Columbians that they serve. They're not doing their jobs. And when someone in a fiduciary responsible position has evidence and they're ignoring it, they could be sued individually. I'm not threatening them because I don't plan on a lawsuit. But I can tell you some people are looking into it. And I believe that this will be something that they will not be able to ignore. Other jurisdictions, of course, uh, Saskatchewan, probably the best example. They had eight complaints about fire hazards. They banned them outright. How come other governments haven't done this, or have other governments done it? Other governments have. Portland did. Uh, some down in Florida did. But to be completely clear, Jim, Saskatchewan took out the meters that were there, but they brought got a new brand and bought them, brought them in. They didn't return the analogs. And this is what needs to be done. Nowhere have I seen any brand or make of smart meter that has not had problems. They are fire hazards. They invade your privacy. The entire grid system is designed to gather data that is not needed for billing purposes. They are radiating. They have radiation that is making people sick. So, you know, they can change the, the brand, that, but they're not going to avoid the problems. The only meter that is a safe meter is a, de, a dependable, a reliable, non-invasive meter is an analog. And they are still being made. And people in the States are getting them. As a matter of fact, last week, I got emails from two people one in Arizona, and one in Maine. In Maine, um, a person there who has solar panels was given two new analog meters to do net metering so that they could monitor the energy coming in and the energy being used so that they could um, give credit for the solar panels that are feeding the grid. They have brand new analogs. Someone in Arizona, where they are allowed to opt out and keep their analogs, was given a new analog. So this is just last week. So when Hydro says, first, analogs are not being made, this is not true. Second, Hydro has told people the grid will not work if they have analogs. That is not true. Maine and Arizona have smart grids, and people are allowed to keep their analogs, and it works just fine. Three analog uh, Hydro has said that Measurements Canada has implemented brand new restrictions and regulations that the analogs don't meet, that the new restrictions are so res restrictive and so strong that the analogs don't meet them. I called Measurements Canada and spoke with them about this, and they said that's not true. There are no new restrictions that would require... Um, anything other than an analog, all they want to ensure is that whatever meter is being used is accurate. So Hydro never tells us the truth. And I fear that BC Utilities Commission is now in the same boat. I don't have any faith that they're telling me the truth either. And they're not doing their job. Nope. Nope. I don't consider this closed by a long shot, Jim. 
What's the latest on the class action lawsuit? Uh, judge rejected certification but gave you lots of hints that perhaps you were on the right track. The, the judge did say that um, our, our complaint was valid as far as the charter issue was concerned. She said that was valid. And we have until the middle of September to resubmit the claim. And the, the major problem was um, the classes. She felt the classes were too broad. And what we tried to do, and we thought it was the right approach. I still wonder if it wasn't. What we tried to do was to include everyone who had refused a smart meter and who had had it put on anyhow, despite their refusals, or those people who had later found out that the smart meters were either making them sick or might make them sick and wanted them removed and they couldn't have them removed, or those people who are still fighting and have analogs and are being harassed. We thought that everyone should have the right to make a choice. And the judge is saying that this is too broad. We shouldn't have tried to include everyone. We haven't yet decided, Jim. The judge did say she felt that the charter challenge might be better done on an individual basis. But there are problems doing things on an individual basis. The court system isn't really geared to allowing individuals to go after corporations like Hydro. There's a um, system of immunity that doesn't work for individuals. For instance, if an individual um, laid a charge against BC Hydro and BC Hydro fought it and won, it could go back and say all of the money that they spent fighting that individual charge has to be paid for by the individual. And as we know, BC Hydro has a big, big load of very expensive lawyers that rack up the bills at $700 an hour or something like that. They could bankrupt an individual very, very easily. So, you know, this is something that people have to take into consideration. It's not a fair system. It's loaded against the individual. So what we're trying to do right now is we're we're looking at our options. Um, there are quite a few options. And there are different ways that people can um, confront hydro, different legal means, and we have to investigate it and see what's open to us. And Sharon, what websites should people go to if they're concerned about these issues? We have two of them. The coalition site, it has most of the information specific to smart meters, is www.stopsmartmeters bc.com and our website that has most of the health issues related to smart meters, cell phones, Wi-Fi, things like that is www.citizensforsafetechnology.org. Sharon, thank you so much for speaking with us. As always, it's my pleasure, Jim. My guest has been Sharon Noble, director of the BC Coalition to Stop Smart Meters. You're listening to The Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our popular YouTube channel is TalkDigitalNetwork. Questions for the show can be emailed to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on The Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of Howe Street Media Incorporated.